Good evening, Simon here, Explosive Action, and I'm back with a movie update. It's all Blu-rays this time. Every single one of these is a Blu-ray, except for the very first one. But anyway, let's get cracking. And that very first one is a bit of a plug and you can't get it anyway. This is for my documentary that I put out last month, Philippine Soldiers, with the help of Andrew Liebold, the uh, Filipino film historian and Wang Wangologist Supreme. Um, I ran off 10 copies of this on DVD-R, just for a bit of fun, and uh, I got a bit of a interest in them, and I sold all 10 um, within an hour. I was very happy with that, very surprising. Um, yeah, so this is, this is my documentary that I um, did on Teddy Page, and I put it onto DVD. This is my copy. There you go. And uh, yes, I kept number one out of 10 for myself. I did number them. Why not? <laughs> and um, Yes, it, uh, so you can't get the copies anymore because they, they were very limited. Um, but if you're interested and you haven't seen it, please uh, check out the link at the end of this video. And um, you can watch the whole thing online. It goes for about an hour. And it's, it's one of the videos I'm very most proud of. So uh, please do check it out. And one more thing before we get to the Blu-rays. No, I'm not stalling. But I got issue two at Eastern Heroes. Um, the new, well, newly rebirthed uh, magazine. Um, not entirely sure when the originals were, but um, I never had them myself. But this is the new Eastern Heroes, Volume 1, Issue 2, September 2021. Uh, the last one was August, so I'm presuming these are monthly and I'm going to be um, collecting the whole lot. But this is such a fun, um, fun new volume of uh, martial arts. Uh, I'll just flip through some of it here. Well, there is a way, there is a dragon. Um, traces of the dragon. Victor Can interview, um, Cinema of Hate, Old School Bashes, lots of fun there, um, and yeah, Return of the Ninja, all the white guy ninja films, Jimmy Wang Yu, um, and there is, if I can get to it quickly, a, well, they, they started reviewing discs, which is really cool, brand new 88 films down there, and uh, there is a Cynthia Rothrock interview in here somewhere. Which I'm failing to find because it must be at the back or I just missed it but anyway yes there is a Cynthia Rothrock interview in here so yeah very cool definitely support this new magazine as I said it's quite thick so what is this uh, not 100 pages it's clearly print on demand um, because I got this in an Amazon Australia and it says printed in Australia which it's obviously not an Australian um, magazine but using Amazon's uh, on-demand services, they just they can build these things out and it is very nice for uh, an on-demand magazine. So definitely support it, Eastern Heroes. And now we will start with the Blu-rays. I will no longer stall. And uh, the very first one I'm gonna take a look at in this fairly large pile. And I have thinned this down to uh, spread some over to the uh, October update because that's gonna be pretty big as well. So intentionally slimmed down. And the first one here is Vanquish which is a uh, Morgan Freeman and Ruby Rose film, predominantly Ruby Rose, though Morgan Freeman is in it for more than just the two seconds that you might be thinking. Um, not sure if it is a direct-to-video film. Um, it definitely was in Australia. It looked like it was gonna be interesting and um, I really enjoyed this. It's by the numbers, um, sort of a revenge kind of thing, but it's really, uh, Ruby Rose is a um, assassin, for hire kind of deal, um, but a bit more on a um, uh, what's she doing? She's like she's she's sent on missions by uh, Morgan Freeman to collect money that's owed, and it always goes badly and very violently. And um, I thought it was a hoot. It just you know it, it runs at 93 minutes. It's very basic plot, strong violence, fast action some pretty dumb dialogue. Ruby Rose is really good in it. I'm enjoying her foray into uh, action films. So uh, it's not as good as The Doorman. The Doorman's the best one I've seen from her so far, but yeah, this is really good. Vanquish, definitely worth checking out. If you know what you're getting into, don't expect John Wick. It is, you know, the B-grade John Wick. Uh, speaking of B-grade, I haven't watched this one yet. Nicolas Cage's new one, Kill Chain. He's off the chain at the moment. Man, his films are nuts. Um, this one looks like a pretty cool um, sort of revenge actioner again. 
Hitman, Femme Fatales, X Mercenaries. I think we're going to get some classic cage in this one in Kill Chain. There he is there with a beard and some spectacles. Yeah, haven't seen it yet. It uh, is a or is it last year or this year film? Not oh, 2019. It's actually a 2019 film, but this disc only just came out, so I'm a bit delayed here in Australia. Runs at a short 91 minutes. Yeah, Kill Chain. I'm sure I'm going to like it. Always get something of enjoyment out of his uh, director video action films. This, this is a proper good film. The Wrath of Man, Guy Ritchie's new one with Jason Statham. Awesome. Um, I, I loved this. I thought this was fantastic. Definitely uh, one of his, uh, the pairings, best films. Um, the last time I saw them together like this was Snatch. This is not a funny film. It's got some funny bits, but it is not the black comedy like Snatch. This is a hard, gritty, gangster movie with a heist and some supreme action. Um, yeah, Statham gets very one-man army in this film, um, but he's he's a lot more clever than um, just a you know bullet hell shooter or something. He's a lot more clever than that. I don't want to ruin it too much. Um, very sort of tied in Guy Ritchie kind of plot. You know, you're never entirely sure what's going on. Um, but this was fantastic. This, this was a proper good quality film. Um, how long did this run for? Uh, just under two hours. Um, and it really flew by for me and I really wanted to watch it again. So um, yeah, awesome stuff. Wrath of Man. Um, really good to see Statham getting um, top cinema quality movies again. Uh, he had, had quite a bunch of movies like The Meg and uh, you know a few director video kind of things um, which I'm all about but I'm really happy to see Statham and Guy Ritchie team up again with Wrath of Man good stuff this one I've been holding off for a special time because I know it's going to be good everyone said it's good your man and mine extra and the mutilator he has told me it is good I just need it to be one of those days where I, I have to have a good movie like it needs to be a good movie and that's going to be nobody a lot of a lot of press about this one um, you know it's made from the John Wick guys it's very similar in the John Wick plot as I understand um, and it's just meant to be fantastic action that's about all I know at this point the trailer was fun uh, it's got uh, um, well, I'm not entirely sure who this guy is but it's um, Bob what Bob Oden Kirk I think is his name is that the guy's name? Yeah, from Better Call Saul, which is a show I know, but eh, not a show I've seen. But it's got Christopher Lloyd with a machine gun. And uh, that sells me as much as uh, John Wick. So there you go, nobody. Uh, it's gonna be good, everyone said it's good. So looking forward to it at the right time. Another one here, this is uh, from the producers of Rambo Last Blood and Resident Evil, apparently inspired by true events, Operation Red Snake. Um, I like my modern military action films. It's uh, you know the, the sniper DTV sequels, the marine sequels, that kind of stuff. Just you know modern warfare. Not always. I like World War Two films and Viet. And of course, I love Vietnamese uh, war films. Uh, go back to my Teddy Page documentary. But um, I really get a, a kick out of these modern uh, techniques, modern military stuff. And um, that's this one here, Operation Red Snake. Um, it's a all-female um, sort of vigilante army or something. I'm not entirely sure. Um, uh, what do we got here? Uh, Kurdish forces in Syria in the battle against Muslim extremism. Um, born in different cultures, deeply united. The women heal their past wounds and discover their present strength. Especially the fear they inspire in their opponents, jihadists who are terrified of being killed by a woman. So this this could be a good fun. Uh, I've been told it's good fun, and uh, yes, intoxicating and relentless. That sounds that sounds fun to me. 111 minutes, so it's a bit longer than the usual uh, DTV actioner, um, but I reckon it's going to be good fun. So yeah, Operation Red Snake. This is a film I saw on DVD decade ago maybe maybe eight eight years we'll, we'll call it eight years and the sequels two and three had blu-ray and many copies worldwide but the first film has never had a blu-ray until now outpost australian first worldwide first blu-ray of outpost 
out through Umbrella Entertainment. And it looks really good. Proper uh, 240 the one aspect ratio Blu-ray. Um, it's region B, I didn't check if it's locked or not. So anyway, if you like your Nazi zombies, check out Outpost. This was in World War II, I think, wasn't it? Um, War Ravages Eastern Europe. Yeah, pretty sure it was, yeah. Proper, proper Nazi zombies, not later Nazi zombies. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I am looking forward to checking this one on and watching it all the way through. I just wanted to check the quality and the quality is fine. But um, has been some time since I watched it originally and uh, yeah, it's due for a rewatch. Double-sided, um, the normal cover has the Australian ratings logo on it. But it's one clever thing Umbrella is doing lately is that they're getting some stuff out internationally. They know you know, Americans and co are buying their films, so they flip it to not have the logo on there. Still unfortunately on the spine, but at least it's quite small. So there you go, Outpost, really good Nazi zombie film. Uh, this is an 80s classic apparently, but it's missed me by entirely. The Borrower, um, when this one got uh, put up by Shout Factory, I heard a lot of woohoos from people. One of those VHS saved 80s horror films, or maybe even just 1990 on the dot, 1991. Um, that uh, has not had a good release before. Here we are on a Blu-ray, but I don't know much more than that. I'm sort of I'm going in kind of blind. It's a canon film, um, which is always good, and, but it's canon presents. So I don't think they actually have anything to do with it. Um, definitely the uh, yes, Golo and Govis are not on the back here, so I don't think they had anything to do besides distribution. Um, but uh, it's from the director John McNaughton of Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. So it gives us some uh, credibility there. And it is a superior genre affair about a cannibalistic serial killer from outer space who's just trying to get ahead in this world. It sounds really fun to me. I don't remember if it had a flip. No, but it's got some uh, artwork underneath, which is nice. No slip or anything on this one. They didn't put it out under their collector's editions. That's fine with me. There you go, The Borrower. Looking forward to that one. Also, Prom Night. I got the next two here, I got used, um, but not really used. They're from somebody that uh, I'm pretty sure never watched them. I just shelved them and then moved them on. Prom Night. I haven't seen this film this decade, uh, that's for sure. I've got an Australian DVD four pack, and the films are all full screen and they're terrible. And this Blu-ray is, is probably nearly 10 years old at this point. 2014, it's getting, getting close to it. And I somehow missed it entirely. I don't know what happened, but I just missed it. Finally got it, um, got it cheap. And I really love the um, reverse art on this one. The actual artwork is, you know, the poster one, but it's got all this, you know, special edition and all that kind of crap on it. I don't know, didn't look really appealing. I really like the hand-painted artwork on this one. Um, 80s slasher classic, 1980, um, with um, a very uh, low-cut top, <laughs> uh, as you can possibly see in the top corner, on uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, and um, yeah, and it's got Leslie Nielsen in it as well, who's not being as funny as you would think from Naked Gun, but this is a classic. It's, um, yeah, 1980, quite early in the slasher cycle, so yeah, on par with, like, first Friday the 13th, but lots of good fun in Prom Night. Happy to get an upgrade. As I am with Street Trash, this is a great, great fun horror gore comedy film. It's a, it's a bit like you know, Brain Dead in that kind of department. Um, I actually intentionally held off buying this because the Arrow DVD was so spectacular when upscaled on my my Blu-ray player. I just thought, well, why do I need a Blu-ray? And I was not going to buy this, but again. The guy was selling both of these and they were very very cheap so yeah i picked up street trash it's a classic it's a genre classic and i've got the blu-ray so i'm happy with that um, both of these have the synapse films booklets in it got a um what do we have here a um yeah the viper um sticker which is still here which is nice and uh yeah just the single disc so there you go street trash lots of lots of special features great fun film Always liked this one um, since I had the DVD, and uh, yeah, I'll actually see if this Blu-ray is better than my upscaled DVD. I'm sure it is, but that Arrow DVD was really good stuff. Street trash. Onto the second pile now, and we start off with five Severin films. The first three, man, they are just knocking it out of the park. 
I've been through this before, Strike Commando, Robo War, films I never thought were going to make it to Blu-ray, and here they are again, knocking off three post-apocalyptic films. Warriors of the Year uh, 2072, this is a really really fun uh, Lucio Fulci um, post-apoc film. It's The Running Man, though this came out I believe before, yeah 1983, this came out before The Running Man, but it's very much that you know, game show of um, trying to survive. Uh, being filmed on TV kind of deal, just like running there. And um, but it, it's got the the full Fulci ridiculous, you know, little. It's not to to his level of the beyond level of gore, but when it does have it, you know, it's it's Fulci. He's got his mark of the violence all over this. Grizzly Mayhem, as it says here, um, it's got Fred Williamson in it. He's not in it for the first half of the film or so. Um, and it's got um, yeah, what's his name? Jared Martin of Dallas. I didn't know who he was before I saw this film anyway. Um, yeah, it's it's the first time really this film has had a respectable digital release. I'll get to that in a minute, but you get um, get the Blu-ray, you get a soundtrack CD, there you go, chapter card, really nice thing here. So it has had a DVD that Troma put out and they, they butchered it, it was the worst DVD ever. I think it was full screen, but what I recall was that it was incomplete and not as in cut it was it, it stopped before the end credits like it just stopped that's what I remember about it I remember binning it and then buying the Japanese VHS which was uncut but here we are too blu-ray outstanding um, there's not a great deal more to say about it it is a really 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 fun um, post-apocalyptic game show film just like Running Man Warriors of the Year 2072 um, fantastic Lucio Fulci film um, and the next one, I'm actually going to skip that, get to that one in a minute. Endgame, I love this one, this is a Joe D'Amato, um, really strong, really a little bit silly. Um, and the first author, this is probably the first authorised release ever. There's been quite a lot of German DVDs, but you never know how actually legit they are. But this is an authorised Blu-ray release, um, and also has another soundtrack CD. So there's the film chapter card CD it's got a really fun uh, soundtrack who was the um, Carlo Mario Cordio um, and uh, yeah this is this is just classic post nuke stuff um, one of the better spaghetti sci-fi films of the decade I like that spaghetti sci-fi um, yeah that, that is what this thing is it's uh, also limited 2,000 copies I don't know why this was limited the other ones don't say they're limited but this one's limited, must have been a licensing thing, um, and it has the uh, After the Bomb interview with uh, Luigi, what's his name, Montefiore and George Eastman. So um, yeah, it's a good one. This is a really good one. I, I don't think many people really love it, but I, I kind of do. Um, and as I said, it's a little bit silly. Uh, tons of fun for lovers of Italian exploitation, as it says, and it's a 2K scan from the original negative. But um, you can tell from the cover, if you've never seen it, it's your Road Warrior kind of post apoc standard riff. Um, everything is very similar, but it's done really, really well. Humans hunted as prey. Yeah, end game. Fun. But this is the one that just went, I can't believe we are finally in a world where this film has a Blu-ray release. It had a German DVD that looked good, but had no English audio. <sighs> finally. Raiders of Atlantis, yes, Atlantis Interceptors also, um, the quote on the back here just says fucking awesome. Yeah, um, this is a great film, it's technically not post-apocalyptic, they don't really say it's, you know, the deserted future year 3000 or anything, but it's really um, uh, a film that is, it, an event happens that triggers the um, rebirth of Atlantis and Atlantis comes up from the ocean hey, Atlantis is back and it happens to be filled with basically bikers with weird cars and bikes and you know Mad Max kind of helmets and things and that's why it gets thrown into the post apoc so it's not really post apocalyptic but it gets thrown in there because of the look and the action of the um, the bad guys in the film and that's fine I'm, I'm filing under post apoc as well uh, Christopher Connolly, of course, you see him there. 
fantastic artwork on this. I do have like a giant, um, what do they call them? The Italian four sheet things. It's massive. I unfortunately do not have room in this place to hang it up. I unfolded it a little while ago, took a look at it, and went, I wish I had room for you, but I don't. Very big shame. Um, but yes, Raiders of Atlantis from Reguero Diodato. And for the, being the, you know, out of those three films, being the like, you know, Chef's Kiss, this is the one that, uh, yeah, just has a disc, no soundtrack, no card. I don't know. I don't know why this one didn't get the red carpet treatment, but it certainly did in the presentation. It looks fantastic, sounds fantastic, um, and yes, yeah, scanned in 4K from the uh, Interpositive for the first time in America, first time anywhere really. This has not had a proper legit release in English since VHS. So, yep, Raiders of Atlantis, Atlantis Interceptors, excellent stuff. Another film from Severin that has not had a release besides VHS. Um, I like this film quite a lot. This is Siege um, with a really great slipcover. Um, Canuck exploitation, from what I remember, the Canadian film. It is a um, uh, you know, gritty urban actioner, um, vigilante kind of gang that um, goes and uh, how to politically correctly say this. Um, they shoot up everybody in a gay bar except for one guy who escapes and he takes refuge in um, just a random couple's apartment and then the film is basically um, the couple being ordered by the gang to send out send him out and we'll spare your lives and then you know the couple protecting him and then traps and revenge and it's a lot of fun I thought this one's great sleazy as incredibly sleazy um, there's the reverse artwork there Nice to have a slip for this one. Uh, just the disc. But uh, yeah, I think it, I think it is a Canadian film. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, yeah, Canadian shockers are in the 80s. Rarely seen, and that's very true. The VHS in Australia was the um, KTEL. Was it KTEL? I think it was KTEL. Yeah, pretty sure it was a KTEL release on VHS. Um, I had it for a long time. And um, I let it go. Um, because I needed the money, to be honest, at the time, and that was when the VHS tapes were going for stupid money. They're not so much now. Um, and then Severin announced a Blu-ray. I'm like, oh, best of both worlds. Rich man VHS money and Blu-ray in a slipcover. So yeah, this is a great one. If you've not seen it, uh, do check it out. Not many people will have seen it. Um, nice reverse on the slip too. So yeah, Siege. Very grisly stuff. Um, and this one I wasn't expecting an upgrade from because Code Red did a reasonable Blu-ray. But as I learned afterwards, it was not the full cut, the extended long director's cut. That's Retribution. Code Red DVD looked more like that, the screamy guy. This is a good fun uh, 80s, I think it's 80s, pretty sure it's 80s. Um, it's a supernatural horror thing. Um, let me get it out of the slip, which is very difficult. For some reason, this slip is incredibly tight. Whoop, there we go. And I'm not going to try and risk sleeve that on camera. There's the artwork that's a bit more like the Australian VHS was, um, which is where I first watched it, then I watched the Code Red Blue. No, I watched the VHS, then the Code Red DVD, then the Code Red Blue, and I haven't checked out the Severin Blue yet, but it's a good time. This film is a good time. Uh, 1987, yeah. Um, directed by Guy McGar, who... Uh, it's his film debut. Yeah, it's not a um, director I'm particularly familiar with, but three disc collection US theatrical cut extended Dutch video version wow and the soundtrack CD so there you go you get disc one disc two blu-ray and soundtrack CD which I should pop in and give a listen to it I've never wanted to actually put the soundtrack CDs in very often but I probably should a bit more often than I do uh, there's a nice booklet which has uh, yeah well, info about the film lots of stuff there I think it's interview with the director yep very cool. It's a good, fun, supernatural 80s horror film. Highly recommended. Um, yeah, a great lost gem. I wouldn't say it's a lost movie. It's had four releases on digital format. Um, it's got, uh, what's her name? Susan Snyder from Weird Science and is it Hoyt Axton? Hoyt from Gremlins. Anyway, good, fun film, Retribution. Uh, the first time at least I've ever seen this extended cut. To my knowledge, I don't think the Australian VHS was that version, so yeah, Retribution. Um, another film, I've been meaning to check this one out. 
uh, for a very long time because it's got Bruce Campbell in it. I've never been able to watch it, but I do have the chance now. Vestron release of Sundown number 21 in their, um, their, what are they calling this? Just collector series, Vestron video collector series. Uh, Sundown, the Vampire in Retreat. Some people have said it's pretty crappy, but it's got David Carradine and Bruce Campbell. So therefore I'm going to watch it and these things are cheap. Like Australian, this was 16 Australian, so that must be like $10 US. I don't know why these are so cheap, but they are so cheap. Yeah, don't know much about it. I am going fairly blind. 1990 film. Uh, the road to purgatory is paved with good intentions and Count Mardulak, who's David Carradine, wouldn't have it any other way. Seeking atonement for centuries of human carnage. Um, instructed vampire, purgatory's vampire residents to slather on SPF 100 sunblock and pursue daytime activities. All oh, their day walkers. Drink only synthetic blood. This is already sounding very silly. Uh, wild horror comedy also stars Bruce Gamble, which is really why I'm in this. So I never knew too much about it. The Australian VH has had really awesome wild artwork that would um, be nice if they included here because it is very, very cool. But um, yeah, they don't. Just cheap, bloody eco case. And uh, yeah, missed opportunity they could put different artwork underneath, underneath the slip, but there you go. So yeah, I'll check this one on and uh, see if it's good time or if it's just cringy. Sundown. Nice upgrade here. There was a US blue and I kept putting it off, kept putting it off. I think Shout did it, just kept putting it off. Then Eureka went, no, we're going to give you a slip case. And I said, okay, thank you. Prophecy, uh, not the Walken Films Prophecy. This is Prophecy with um, uh, Talia Shire, who's in um, Rocky, Rocky Films, of course. There she is down there. Um, I love this artwork. It's very, you know, gives away a bit of it, but I still love it. The real artwork is that one. Leaves a lot more to the imagination. And uh, yeah, what year is this? Like 1980 on the dot, I think. 1979. Um, good fun. Um, in that, uh, you know, that time it was late 70s creature film. You know, your um, Jaws kind of extension films crocodile alligator that kind of stuff um, and we have prophecy here but this is a lot more this, is, this has got a bit more of a extra kind of thing going on in it. graphically violent piece of environmental horror from John uh, John Frankenheimer um, who is well known for many many films um, and they are escaping me at the moment which is embarrassing but I do know him from many films um, but yeah Nice, nice release. So many special features on this thing. Uh, the O card slipcase, um, a feature length audio commentary, um, new audio commentary by uh, Lee Gambon and Emma Westwood. The truth and fiction, new interview with screenwriter Cat, Cata Hid, Cat, what? Cata Hidden Speaks. Cata Hidden? Anyway, new interview with mime artist Tom McLaughlin. Uh, trailer, TV, radio spots, and the collector's booklet. You should get out and have a look at. Just got really cool artwork as well. So there we go. Prophecy. Some people said this is kind of slow and boring, but I disagree. I think this is a good fun film. Nice looking, uh, sort of different VHS from around the world there. Got the lobby cards on the back. Yeah. Yeah, John Frankenheimer, uh, Frankenheimer, uh, Manchurian Candidate. There you go. That's like you know, real film. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, good stuff. Prophecy. Been a while since I've watched it. Um, I had the who did the DVD? It's like Image or somebody. Someone did a DVD a very long time ago. I've had that thing for ages. Now I have the Eureka Blu-ray, so I will be able to. Uh, revitalize my memory on what the film is about prophecy this one i've seen many times this was one of the first dvds i ever got i had uh the really terrible australian force dvd it came out in i don't know 1999 something like that very early days it was a vhs presentation on dvd then an anchor bay dvd then an anchor bay did they do a Divi Max DVD or something like that? They did another edition. Blue Underground Blu-ray. And now 
not that I can watch this, but 4K Ultra HD, but really I got this because it's got um, the remastered Blu-ray as well. Dead and Buried, and the lenticular cover. There was three different covers of this, and the other two are just, why? Why would you get that? This is classic, classic artwork. Of course you get this one. Craters of Alien bring a new terror to Earth. Um, it's one of those films that it, it's, if you, if you explain it, you've given it away, the film, so I'm not going to. Um, traditionally, it's always looked fairly grimy on um, on all the releases, which is why it's had so many remasters, I think. But um, yes, a something strange is happening in the quiet coastal village of Potter's Bluff, where tourists and transients are warmly welcomed, then brutally murdered. Even more shocking is when the slain strangers suddenly reappear as normal, friendly citizens around town, dead and buried. It's classic stuff if you've not seen it. There's the artwork again. What do we get? A whole bunch of stuff. Blu-ray. Um, there's a soundtrack CD from Joe Renzetti. Booklet on the 4K people that can play it, which is not me. And yeah, booklet. Very nice. Really good release. Hopefully the very last time I will ever buy it. Surely this is it. Surely. Can't get any better than this. Yeah, so they went back and remastered it. Um, does it say any? Yeah, scan in 4K, 16-bit from its 35mm into positive. Dolby Vision, HDR and Dolby Atmos audio. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but it does have the English mono DTS HD, which is what you want. Um, never really understood um, getting a film that was shot in mono and then making it a seven-speaker film wasn't shot that way, it was shot in mono, so there you go, that's why I wanted it. It's got all the features, commentaries, four commentaries behind the scenes, uh, locations, a whole bunch of stuff, these are all listed as new, and then there's the stuff they've ported across from previous editions, plus the soundtrack and the booklet, very nice stuff, pretty sure it's still available, um, the various editions sometimes sell out, so anyway, double check, but dead and buried, classic stuff. This one took me ages to get. Uh, I finally picked it up because the guy that sold me Street Trash, he had this and I got it for a very good price. The Big Gun Down, not a film that I'm familiar with, but Grindhouse, when they put out these luxurious editions of westerns and Italian films, I just have to get it. Look at that embossed cover. Um, I'm told it's very, very good spaghetti western, um, but I don't know anything about it going in pretty blind uh, first ever US home video release so um, I don't know how well known it was before this except for people that you know would have been part of the Greek VHS or something like that um, but it's got Lee Van Cleef who's very well known and uh, Thomas Millian who's also very well known in Italian films and uh, Once Upon a Time in the West screenwriter Sergio Donati Big Gun Down features an incredible soundtrack by Ennio Morricone, so it's uh, it's an everything spaghetti western. It sounds like it's got everything you want from the genre. Really nice Italian um, poster up there. So I think I'll be chucking this one on pretty soon, given its heritage and how many people have been talking to me about this film. Four discs, so good. Booklet. Not sure if it was in print still or not. As I said, it came out a while ago and I just kind of slept on it. And then my mate was uh, basically liquidating his entire stock. And I got it for a good price. So, I will finally check out the big gun down. Awesome stuff. If you've seen it, do let me know what it's like. Two here from 88 films before we get to the box sets at the back. Uh, the first one is a... Um, well, they're both Italian films. The first one is a Italian non-sploitation that I've never heard of until 88 uh, released it. Number 64 in their Italian line. This is uh, None and the Devil. I'll be having none of that. Now, <laughs> uh -huh. nice thick boxes that they're doing at the moment to uh, try and get an extra five pounds out of me. Whatever. Um, it, it gives them somewhere to put the ridiculous books, which are, you know, pretty full-on interview type thing. I mean, sure they could have thinned this down if they wanted to, but look, they're nice editions and then they release them after in thin editions with a slipcase. Um, 
So there's the Italian poster art. Like I said, I don't know anything about this one. None of the devil, I'm going in very blind. Um, directed by Domenico Palo Paolella from The Prey. Uh, the Prey is good, if it's The Prey I'm thinking of. The Prey, story of a cloistered nun. It's not The Prey I'm thinking of. Uh, the Nun and the Devil, aka Le Monash di Saint Arc Archangel. Why do I even try? I don't know. A heavily erotic tale of seduction and persecution, detailing the sinful practices which spill out of the 16th century convent. Um, this has got a dying mother superior and nasty turns and lesbian couplings. Two years after Ken Russell's The Devils 1973 film sought to offer the corruption of the innocent style plot which monopolized on the short-lived wave of non-exploitation features. Very true, they all did a pretty similar plot. So yeah, really don't know much about it. There you go, 1973, it's got Italian and English audio and English subtitles. And it's got six lines of special features, 2K restoration. See what it's like? Absolutely no idea about this one. But I am a bit of a sucker for the Italian uh, collection. None of the devil. Very cool. And again, these nice thick boxes they're using. And the last of the 88 films we have, Violent Professionals. They have uh, number 66 in the Italian line. Uh, Sergio Martino. Um, very good Italian Euro crime film uh, from 1973. Code Red did a Blu-ray two years ago now at this point. And I enjoyed the film quite a lot. So. Uh, was happy to double dip. Um, I've let the code red blue go away. This one is is chock full of features, um, starring Richard Conti from The Godfather and a powerhouse score by composers Guido and Maurizio De Angelis, who did Street Law, um, Italian crime classic. That's pretty much how I describe it. This is one of the better ones, absolutely. Um, I'll read some from the back here. Uh, Tough cop Giorgio doesn't like to play by the rules, going as far as gunning down a ruthless criminal in broad daylight. He's suspended from the force and his boss is murdered. He goes on a brutal undercover dive into the criminal underworld, expose a criminal organization with no respect for authority. Yeah, this is a really good one. I don't know if this is a different, it says new 2K transfer of the film. Could very well just be Code Red's Blu-ray, which was probably a new 2K transfer of the film. Um, doesn't matter, it's all good and has have a look inside again one of these hard boxes they're doing there's the reverse artwork the Italian collection line on the 66 and you get a very nice booklet with some cool artwork and all about the film the Sergio interview nice picture there very nice so yeah Nice addition. I'm enjoying these ridiculous uh, box sets that they're doing. Um, the Devil, Violent Professionals, you know, really good stuff. So, yeah, nice upgrade there. Very happy to have this one. And lastly, we've got two box sets that were put out by Imprint out here in Australia. That is the relatively new, but it's probably at least two years old now. Um, sort of Imprint label, hence the name, from uh, Via Vision, who is just a standard Australian label, but Imprint stuff. They're really taking on. Um, you know, labels like Eureka, very good stuff, and they're doing some awesome box sets. This one, no exception, the Hammer Horror, four Gothic Horrors uh, box set. You get Countess Dracula, Hands of the Ripper, Twins of Evil, and Vampire Circus. Um, films that have had releases before, I've even had uh, three of them before, but I figured it's such a nice box set, I'm gonna get this. So, take a look inside box the very sturdy boxes and I, I love that the the artwork that I've used here vampire circus I think are they reversible they uh, no they're not reversible they have artwork on the inside the vampire circus twins of evil hands of the ripper and countess Dracula all yeah, as it says in the tin, gothic um, uh, Hammer Horror Films. This is the card that was stuck to the back, so I'll read from that. Um, the four films, 1080p presentations, of course. Um, commentaries across them, documentaries across them. Um, trailers, TV spots, all that kind of cool stuff. Bonus disc, Flesh and Blood, The Hammer, Heritage of Horror. 
remastered director's cut with 40 minutes of additional content. So that's worth it itself. I'm not sure which uh, case that is in. I've not dug into this particular set yet. There's Countess Dracula on the inside. Put it down there. There is Hands of the Ripper on the inside. Nice artwork. Twins of Evil, probably the most fun. As I said, I had this edition, uh, these editions before. But I want to get a nice Blu-ray. And this one feels like the one with the double. Indeed it is. Vampire Circus and Hammer Horror Flesh and Blood, which I've only ever seen on a really crappy DVD we had locally. It was a rubbish DVD. Um, get in there. there you go. Vampire Circus. All those extras on the back is just insane. So, really nice. And I'm really enjoying these imprint lines. They're putting in so much love for the films. Get on the right way. There you go. Hammer Horror, four gothic horror films. Very happy addition to my collection. And the last one, which is also a imprint box set. I didn't know anything about these films. Um, I was warned by a couple of people, or oh, they might not be tea or cup of tea. I loved every single one of these. I thought these were a hoot, and I'm gonna dig more into this era because it's an era of film I'm just not that familiar with. This is uh, the Silver Screams Cinema. Uh, Unknown Terror, Return of the Ape Man, Vampire's Ghost, uh, She-Devil, Valley of the Zombies, The Phantom Speaks. Uh, and there was a uh, seventh bonus film, and oh, I've forgotten what that was. Let's just see if it's in here. So I watched all seven films. All were enjoyable. Um, and I think what I really enjoy about them is they're so short. Sometimes I just wanted a short film. When I, when these, uh, when I decided to put these on, I was uh, very time limited, busy at work, very tired in the evening. These things sometimes barely crack 60 minutes and that is good for the time poor evening. Um, so Phantom Speaks, 1945, Vampire's Ghost, 1945, Return of the Ape Man, 1944, Rally of the Zombies 1946, She Devil 1957, um, and Unknown Terror 1957. Does it have the. Yes, bonus 1994, 1944 movie, The Lady and the Monster, which is in HD as well. It's not a standard definition thing that's thrown on there, so it's really seven HD films. Um, of these films, though, go through them quickly. Um, they double sided, so The Phantom Speaks. Um, was a um, particularly good one, I thought. Um, a, a plot that's been done a thousand times since. Um, the condemned man is executed, electric chair, and then um, comes back and sort of possesses people to do his, his bidding. Uh, that was really good. Vampire's Ghost, this one was quite spooky. Um, with, uh, what's his name? Is it, I assume that was John Abbott there, who had the the eyes, man. He had the spooky eyes. Um, a vampire that had lived for too long and had become sort of acclimatized to, um, he was in the Caribbean or something like that. He was just, just living up life, um, gambling. It was a very interesting film, I thought, Vampire's Ghost. Um, this one was, um, this, this one looked a little average in the first reel and then the quality massively improved. Return of the Ape Man. I've never seen the Ape Man, but see, that's that's the thing. Now I've got to go and find the Ape Man. But Return of the Ape Man, which has absolutely nothing to do with Ape Man, so I'm told, uh, is it got a uh, Bella Lugosi, um, John Carradine, and um, yeah, it it was a uh, you know your um, Frankenstein kind of thing, um, building the body, um, but it's got um, some yeah some some pretty cheesy stuff happening in that film I thought it's probably not one of the best films on here Valley of the Zombies um, that one was uh, has some very very cool spooky good use of black and white cinematography I enjoyed that one um, this one's probably the best of the lot the she devil um, she devil they created the human being being who destroyed everything she touched um, woman um, got incredibly sick was going to die doctors gave her basically reanimator fluid from you know, 50 years into the future and um, cured her and made her a violent psychopathic immortal horrible woman um, and yeah that was a lot of fun I enjoyed that one and the unknown terror is sort of a spooky um, 
There's a lot of uh, crawling through caves and underworld creatures and stuff like that. That was a lot of good fun. So, I mean, these things are what is, it, is apparently called poverty row horror. Um, I don't know much about the history of this kind of film, but they're from. Um, is it going to have anything written here? So I remember. I did tag them on uh, on Instagram as I was watching them, but um, the studios that made these films were, you know, the the B grade studios even back in the time, the Asylum of the day. Um, so they weren't Paramount, they weren't MGM. They were these small little movie movie lots, just making, you know, like Return of the Ape Man's kind of related, you know, little bit of a rip off kind of thing, just making these little drive in type movies. Um, and I, I had a whale of a time with all of them. As I said, they're very short. Just and they're beautifully remastered. Imprint have done an astounding job on this. They all look fantastic, except for that first sort of 20 minutes of Return of the Eight Man. It's a bit DVD. Then it gets really, really good, really sharp. They're so much fun, and I really want to dig into more from this um, era of film, the, the 40s and 50s poverty row horror movies. So yeah, please give me some recommendations on what else to check out in that kind of um, era of film and what good releases there are. I'm kind of hoping we'll get a um, a second box set, Silver Screams 2. would make me very happy. I got it on backwards. No, I didn't. There we go. Silver Scream Cinema uh, on imprint. So that's it. That is my Blu-ray update. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, uh, please like, subscribe, all of that stuff. Uh, click this thing and that thing. That one, I'm going to make sure is my um, uh, Filipino soldiers documentary because if you haven't seen it i would like you all to watch it and uh yeah thanks for watching see you next time